What you're going to need, gents, pencil, steel reel, tri square, marking gauge, tenon saw, FG clamping blocks for cutting, or sawing board, as well as your drawing. We're going to start practicing all of the flat frame joining methods. The first thing we require to do is cut four lengths of material to 160 millimeter. Or to mark on face and edge onto your material. Mark one end of my material a square end. That gives me a good starting point for working that line to go all the way around your material. And I'm now going to mark from that line. When I mark my 160 millimeters, nice sharp pencil to be starting. Try square flat up against the edge of your material as we're going. Going to leave a very very small gap. So mark that on again. So round and another 160 so we'll get these cut across like so so there's 160 I've now got bits that I can cut I'm going to cut them and I'm just going to cut them quickly with my bench hook and my tenon saw cutting so I'm just leaving the line on and no more that's them both cut and now what we need to do is square the end so use a band facer to make sure that the angle between the end green of the material and the face and the edge of the material are at 90 degrees with one another. Right. Keep tri square handy to always check after you've used your band face that there's right angles between the edge and the end grain or the face and the end grain of your material. You're going to need to set your mitre fence to zero and check that there's 90 degrees between the edge of the mitre fence and the face of your band facer. And just check my guard as well before we start. And what I'm looking to do is run this back and forth to check that the edges are all actually square. Across. I'm just going to mark out first one, which is a basic lap joint. Your half lap joint is a flat frame construction joint, known as a half lap joint or a halving joint at the corners. What do I do? Well I've checked that the material has got face and edge on it, that the end grain has been squared. I'm going to number them part one and part two. Part one on top of part two and I check that the end grain and the edge actually line up with one another and I'm going to mark a little point onto this. I'm going to square that all the way around. Same on this one. Check, end green and edge, end green and edge, level with one another, square, go across the face, across the edge, like so. And if this is a half lap joint, I'm wanting to mark halfway down the thickness of my material in order to take this off. So measure my material, 18 millimeters thick, take my marking gauge, set my marking gauge to 9 millimeters. So I'll go across the edge, along the end grain, across the edge and I'm going to mark on hatching lines, these diagonal lines to say that's waste material. So I'll go across the edge along the end grain, across the edge and I'm going to mark on hatching lines, these diagonal lines to say that's waste material. And I'm checking if one goes on top of two then I want the top side of two to be removed and the underside of one to be removed. And it's now ready to cut using your sewing board and bench hook. Which cuts are just beside my line, so tuck my thumb in, push my fourth against it. And I'm checking just now, I've come down to the line there. So I put it up into the vise at an angle. And I'm going to cut again across. It's all about accuracy and control with the tools. You want to be able to still see the lines that you're cutting. The alternative, gentlemen, is having your clamp, your blocks for cutting, Down to my line that side. And what you should end up with is two joints, still got the lines all the way around them. 
and they're ready to then be cleaned up. First thing we do with our chisel, check the quality of the chisel, check the tool is sharp and doesn't have any blemishes or breaks on it, that's very very important. Piece of sacrificial material behind the joint that you're cutting in the vise, beveled edge chisel, you can use this top metal section which is a little depth gauge on your bench vise in order to ensure you get consistent chiseling. Two hands behind the blade, never one hand in front. You run the risk of catching yourself. That's an absolute no-no. But I can use that to go across the grain and what that helps with is stopping the material splitting. I've got this sacrificial board here to stop the material splitting and I'm trying to get it so that it's level and even all the way around my material. So I can see my line all the way around as I've cut. When we're using the chisel, every time we've used it, return it to the well of your bench. Don't leave it hanging over the edge of your bench. We can cut with the grain and we can cut across the grain. Put the material in the vise at an angle. You notice I'm coming in and just gradually catching that edge and then coming down as I work. Alternatively, I could have my material clamped down to my bench. As a clamp, I've got the clamping board that I'm working with lined up with the shoulder of the joint. Fingers on top of the sloped part of my chisel, this flat section here. I'm working along the grain, keeping the flat side of the chisel against the flat side of the material.